Hello, this is Craig Hart, executive producer for Legacy Radio Theater. The Sinking of the Titanic is a maritime disaster whose drama has stood the test of time. The personal stories that have come from the tragedy have spawned books, movies, plays, songs, and yes, even audio dramas. One of the lesser-known stories is that of the Navratils, a family caught in misfortune as the Titanic, while on her maiden voyage from Southampton to New York, hit an iceberg and sank in the North Atlantic. The Navratil children, Edmund and Michelle Jr., became known as the Titanic Waifs because none of their rescuers knew who they were. We invite you now to join us as we tell the story of the Titanic Waifs, a story of love, mystery, heartbreak, and sacrifice. Children only. I, I say women and children only. Lock arms, boys. Nobody gets to them unless we say so. Get back. Mr. Lighthouse. Mr. Hoffman, bring your children. Up here, up here. Give way, you. Uh, I've done all that I could. Give us your boys. This is Edmond. Right. Where you go, Edmond? Mario. A moment, please. Mr. Hoffman. We must hurry. I must say goodbye to Michelle. Quickly, man, quickly. Michelle. Yes, Papa? I must tell you something. It is very important that you remember. All right. When you see your mother, you must tell her exactly what I'm about to tell you. Yes, Papa. Oh, my child. Mr. Hoffman, we cannot delay. Do you understand, Michelle? Yes, Papa. I understand. Come on, come on. We've got to get him on board now, Mr. Hoffman. Now. Go. Go. And don't forget. Papa, I'll take them. Thank you. I love you, my sons. That's the lot. Lower away. You men, lower away. What well, now, Mr. Lightola? I suggest you make your peace with God, Sailor. We are very likely to see him soon. Monsieur Navratil? We. Oui. Hi. My name is Wade Benson. I'm sorry, my French is not good. I speak English quite well. Good. Great. Uh, is there something I can do for you? Well, yeah, I think so. I mean, actually, I was hoping we could help each other. Pardon? I'm sorry, I'm not being very clear, am I? No. Uh, Perhaps you should tell me why you are here. Good idea. As I said, my name is Wade Benson. I'm an historian. Ah. Uh. Yeah, and I've been involved with several of the Titanic expeditions. I don't know how I can help you. It's been so long and so much has been written already. But we've learned so much since Dr. Ballard discovered the wreckage. Every expedition leads to new discoveries. Your story, your father's story, it, well, it all has new resonance. What do you know of my father's story? I don't... Uh, let me tell you what you know. My father, Michel Navratil, kidnapped his two sons from his wife in Nice. He intended to bring them to America to start a new life. But the ship they traveled in hit an iceberg and sank. The two boys, myself and my brother Edmund, survived and became known as the Titanic Waves because nobody knew who we were. Have I forgotten anything? Well... Actually, yes. And in other news tonight, 
Michel Navratil, also known as the Titanic Wave, is returning to the spot where he last saw his father 84 years ago, the icy waters of the North Atlantic. The 88-year-old former professor of philosophy at the University of Montpellier will be joining a French-American expedition to continue charting the wreckage and gather artifacts from the ill-fated voyage. It's not much further, Mr. Navratil. <laughs> Please, call me Michel. This is not Montpellier, and you are not one of my students. <laughs> this isn't Montpellier, but as a Titanic historian, I must say I am one of your students. You chose a very old teacher. Hmm. I assume this is your first visit to Nova Scotia? Ah, until I met you, I had no idea my father's body had been recovered. Hmm. He was found by the McKay Bennett. I'm glad I could bring you here. It must be very important to you. It is important for me to complete the circle. There are very few people left who remember sailing on the Titanic. I'm amazed at how much you can recall. Well, you know the Titanic changed my life. The way it changed so many other lives. I will remember until the day I die. And... I will always remember my father. Yeah, this is it. <clears throat> ah, the cemetery is much smaller than I expected. It's the Baron de Hirsch Cemetery. This is where the Jewish victims were buried. My father was not Jewish. He traveled under the name Hoffman. There was some confusion in those early days. Ah. Of course. His grave is right here. Michel Lavretil. Died April 15, 1912. A summation of his entire life. Nobody knew anything about him. Even his name was not his true name. This stone was changed after they learned who it was they buried. I see. Did you understand what was happening? Not at the time. I was not yet four years old. I only learned later that my father had abducted us and was running away to America. Did you know that he was carrying a loaded pistol on his person? No. I had no idea how desperate he was. Uh, do, do you think he was a bad man? He was my father. I loved him as a three-year-old loves his father. I knew he loved us, that he wanted a better life for us. Would your mother have agreed? I remember a song that my father would sing to Esmond and me when he put us to bed. If I had words to make a day for you, I'd sing you a morning. Golden and true. Michel? I can feel my father standing beside me. He is singing that song to me right now. It's time to go. Here's your coffee. It's not what you get at home, I'm sure. It would be fine. I have to say, I'm curious to learn why you wanted to come on this journey. You seem like an unlikely sailor. I told you to complete the circle. 
A circle that began over 85 years ago. Before the Titanic sailed? I know you believe my father was a monster. What kind of man would take his children away from their mother? What kind of man would be traveling with a loaded pistol in his pocket? Well, many of the Titanic passengers were carrying pistols. My father gave me a message to give my mother. Do you know what happened to her? Uh, as I understand it, she was institutionalized. Some people would say she went mad. She died in that mental institution. Michelle? It's easy to draw conclusions about my father from the few things that you know. Are they right? Are they wrong? Ah. It's not a pretty picture that your father's painted for himself. Someday soon, my father will come to me and sing me to sleep. Before he does, I must tell you a story. <clears throat> okay. My father was born in Slovakia. He immigrated to France in 1902, to the seaside city of Nice, where he found much success as a tailor. In 1906, he met a woman who would become my mother. <sighs> Monsieur's inseam, 30. Uh, waist is uh, 36. 36? 36? Mm -hmm. Bruno has never been a 36. You can tell just uh, by looking he is not a 36. Valerie? I'm sorry, Madame Creto, that is what the measurement is. He is a 32. If I cut his pants to a 32, the button will snap. <laughs> Leon! Bring Madame Creto some more tea, please. Thank you. That'll be all for now, Leon. Oui, bien. When will this suit be ready? We have a very important dinner on Thursday. Monsieur Creto can come in for the final fitting on Monday. I will have the suit finished on Tuesday. That will be fine. You can't have it finished any sooner? <clears throat> Would Madame like it? Uh... Mama, have you seen what is going Marcel, on? Marcel, this... you are interrupting. Uh, oh, I, I am sorry, Mama. No, what were you saying, Monsieur Navratil? Oh, I was, uh, I was saying if Madame would like the suit earlier, I would be happy to oblige, Madame. Is that so? Tuesday will be fine. Is. Uh... Is something wrong with me, monsieur? Pardon? Hmm? No, mademoiselle, no. No, there's nothing wrong with you. Uh. So, if you are finished for today, we will yes. be leaving now. Yes, I, I do not require anything else today. This is it. I shall return on Monday. That will be fine. Come along, Marcel. Goodbye, monsieur. Hmm. Goodbye, mademoiselle. Marcel, come along! Yes, mama. I do not say that it was love at first sight, but I do know that they were very much in love. They were married in May 1907. My grandmother was sick that day. Mesdames and Messieurs, a toast to Michel and Marcel Navratil. The next June, I was born. And still, my grandmother did not accept my father. How long will you continue to break my heart, Marcel? Mama. How long will you drive this knife in my back? How can you say that, Mama? How can you say that about my husband? Oh, your husband? Oui. You could have married a baron or vicomte, but no! You marry a common laborer! Do not put on airs, Mama. 
You have no idea what it is like for us. <sighs> you did not cry so much. <sighs> He's like his father. <sighs> oh, Mama. Michelle seems happy. <laughs> uh, Mama was here today. Hmm. Filling you with stories about how wicked I am. Michelle, she is worried about me. Hmm. Of course. She is worried that you will soon be living in the streets. And that will embarrass her. Oh, Michelle. We have a fine home and a good meal before us. I know. Marcel. I have always provided for you. I know. Then you must tell her to mind her own business. I cannot do that. She is my mother. And I am your husband. And Michelle is your son. And we are a family now. Oh, no, look, you have upset the baby. Oh, shh, shh, it's okay. No, no, no. Shh, I know. I will not let you or my son go hungry. I have worked hard for many years and have made a very comfortable life for myself, for you, and for our son. I know that. I have no desire to hurt you. But we cannot allow your mother to divide us. I am going to put Michelle to bed. I don't know what to do, Billet. Marcel's mother is creating problems again. What is she saying this time? She fills my wife with fear, telling her that we will be living in the streets soon. That, that she married beneath her station. Beneath her station? Who does she think she is? Marie Antoinette? Uh, her family is very wealthy. Uh, Michelle, you fool. Madame Coretto is in debt to nearly every shop owner in Nice. What are you talking about? They have no money, no wealth, no position. She will soon be the laughing stock of the city. What? How do you know this? Let me ask you, Michelle. Has she paid for a single suit you've made her husband? I've never charged my father-in-law. They could not pay if you did. I... I can't believe that. Ask around. You'll find out. I'm telling you the truth. <sighs> Open the door, you cow. <gasps> what do you want? Is something wrong with Marcel? What have you done? May I come in? What for? I would like to talk to you. And unless you want your neighbors to know about your financial problems, you will let me come inside. What do you want? You are indebted to many people, Mama. That is none of your concern. Oh, but it is. You are my wife's family, the grandmother of my son. Yes, this is my concern. How much do you need? What? How much money? What are you talking about? I'm ready to pay your debts. I will give you the money you need to clear your accounts. I have no desire to take your money. Then I should pay them without your permission. You owe nearly every shopkeeper in Nice. Why would you do this? I have no desire to have my wife's mother and father living in the streets. Not when I have the means to help them. You are a proud man. As you are a proud woman. So, will you accept my help? My grandmother did accept his help, but it did not change her opinion of him. If anything, it made her more determined to drive my parents apart. Hello, Mama. Hello, Marcel. Come, come, sit. 
Bonjour. Let me get your chair for you. Oh, uh, this is Luke. You remember Madame Gautier? Oh, uh, of course. Luke is her son. Mm. Ah, very nice to meet you. It's nice to meet you, Luke. And how is my grandson? <laughs> Getting so big. <laughs> <laughs> yes, he is. <laughs> oh, would you like something to eat or drink? Uh, no, thank you. I am on my way home. Luke is a successful lawyer. <laughs> is that so? Well, I will be soon. There are several firms interested in me joining them. He is helping us with some family matters. Uh, you two would make a lovely couple. <laughs> Mama! How could you say such a thing? Come, Michel, come. Where, where are you going? Au revoir. Uh, Marcel, do not walk away from me. Leave me alone, Mama. Marcel, stop. What, Mama? What can you possibly have to say to me? Why did you run away from me? Mama, I am a married woman. I am married to Michel Nahratil. You want me to be this man, this, this looks, his whore? He is going to be a very important man. <sighs> he is a much better choice than your tailor. That tailor is my husband. He will always be my husband. I am not asking you to be looks or I am simply introducing oh. you to someone who can be a friend to you. He has money oh, and position. <sighs> Mama, I have news for you. What is it? I have just come from the doctor. Is anything wrong? No, Mama. Nothing is wrong. I am going to have another baby. Oh, Mother. My mother hoped that when Edmund was born, my grandmother would accept my father. Uh, let me guess, that plan didn't work? My grandmother was never going to accept my father. Was there a problem with him? To my grandmother, my father was a common laborer, despite the fact that his clients included members of various royal families. And your mother? I honestly don't know what my mother felt at that time. To all appearances, she loved my father. But... She soon began spending time with Luc Gautier. Nothing unseemly. The theater, restaurants, things my mother enjoyed but my father had no taste for. What did your father think of that? Monsieur Gautier was introduced to us as an old friend of the family. We had no reason to assume anything untoward was happening. At first? Uh, at first. But when their friendship continued for nearly two years, he began to have his doubts. Yes, Michel. Where is Papa? Uh, he will be home soon. We never eat without Papa. <laughs> I know. <gasps> Papa! Where have you been? I was working late, and I had things to do. We've been waiting for you. The children have already started eating. Uh, hello, Lolo. Hello, Papa. Hello, Maman. Uh, have you eaten yet? I am going to a concert tonight. Hmm. With Luc Gautier? Well, yes, with Luc Gautier. While your husband and children wait at home, hmm? Michel, there is nothing improper happening. Luc is a friend of mine. Are you sleeping with him? What? what? I, how can you ask me that? It isn't difficult. You see him more than you see me. You are being ridiculous. I don't think so. Oh, I know you don't think so, but you are. You are accusing me of... Then you still have not answered that question. No. No, I am not sleeping with him. I don't want you to see him tonight. I don't want you to see him ever again. But... Never again, Miss <laughs> The children shall please... Have I made myself clear? 
for a short time, my mother stopped meeting Luc Gautier. I'm so confused, Billy. Marcel refuses to cut her mother's apron strings. What if you took the children somewhere else? Would she follow? I don't know. I don't think she would leave her mother. And... Uh, what? Uh, she has been seen again with this man, Luc Gautier. Uh, I had heard rumors. She says they are just friends. And I can't prove otherwise. They have been seen at the theater and cafes. Michel, you, you must do something. But what can I do? I cannot live without my children. She is making a fool of you. Michel, we've been friends for a long time. Since I first came to Nice. I'm godfather to your son. We must do something. What are you saying? Are you saying that we do something to my mother-in-law? You must decide what you are willing to do to keep your family together. Did you enjoy the performance, Marcel? Oh, it was very fine. I must say, I have a penchant for the... Marcel! Oh, Michel? What are you doing here? We must speak. Perhaps she does not want to speak with you. I'm not talking to you. Shh, Michel! And I suggest you leave while you still can. You should go, Luc. As you wish. Michel? May we find a quiet place to talk? I do not care who hears me. Very well. I will no longer live like this. What? In the morning, I shall find a new place to live. Uh, what? I will not grant you a divorce. Oh. You will not be able to marry Monsieur Gautier. I, I do not want to marry Monsieur Gautier. And you will not deny me my children. Michel! You will not deny me my children! Of course, my grandmother was delighted when she learned what my father had done. Don't you see, Marcel? This is wonderful! Soon you will be free to do as you please. You can marry Luke! And I will have grandchildren! Mama, you already have grandchildren. Oh, yes, yes. You know what I mean. Michel... Michel said he would not give me a, a divorce. Oh, well, that is what he says now. But soon he will want to marry one of those tarts he sees. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> Mama! Michel has always been faithful to me. It is I! Marcel, Marcel. Oh, Mama! <laughs> it's such a small flat, Michel. Where will the children play when they visit? I would not be here long. Listen to me, Billy. They have a plan. Bonjour. Bonjour, Monsieur Navratil. Uh, what can I help you with today? I'd... Uh, I'd like to make a withdrawal. Good morning, Michel. Good morning, Leon. Do you have anything for me? It arrived last night. Good. In the uh, cutting room. Let me see it. It's not loaded. It's heavier than I thought it would be. It's not a toy, Michel. Are you sure you want this? 
все. When you reach Monte Carlo, Etienne will meet you with your tickets. To where? Uh, England. Oh, that's not far enough. I must go to America. Steamers leave from England every day of the week. You should have no problem finding a ship. Are you sure this is what you want to do, monsieur? I I'm sure. But there is something I need you to arrange for me. I will bring Michelle and Edmund back on Monday. You will keep them over Easter? My mother invited us to her home. Your mother can see the children anytime she wants. Let me have this. Yes, of course. It will not be a problem. Lolo, give your mother a kiss goodbye. Maman, you too. Yes, Papa. Goodbye, Mama. Lolo, take your brother in. Uh, wait outside, please. Yes, Papa. Come, uh, Edmond. Marcel. Yes, Michel? <sighs> Nothing. Goodbye. We took the train to Monte Carlo where we boarded a ship for England under the name Hoffman. In 1912, it must have been easy to change your identity. It was a matter of changing the name on a few papers. When you told people your name, nobody questioned you. Welcome to the Charing Cross Hotel. May I help you? Uh, my name is Hoffman. We have a reservation. Ah, let's see. Um... Hoffman. One adult, two children. Sign here, please. Oh. Mm -hmm. Room 126. Uh, these tickets arrived for you yesterday. Ah, to be sailing on the Titanic. Well done, you. The Titanic? Oh, thank you. Sir, your son? Oh, Lolo! Lolo, come back here! He seems to be quite a handful. Uh. It's his first time away from home. Are you expecting the mother any time soon? Uh, their mother is dead. <laughs> uh, wave goodbye, boys. Who are we waving to, Papa? Everyone, Michel. We are saying goodbye. Ah, oh, she was a beautiful ship. A magnificent ship. Edmund and I played on the forward deck. We were thrilled to be there. Neither of us knew what our father had done. To us, it was the adventure of a lifetime. And all the time, my father never left our sights. Tell me about that Sunday, April 14th. Hmm, that Sunday the air got colder. Edmund and I played inside most of the day. You have lovely children. Uh, pardon? Your children, they are lovely. Oh, uh, thank you, Miss... Uh... Layman. Bertha Layman. We uh. sat across from you at dinner last night. Oh, yes, I'm sorry. Uh, my boys hold my attention. Well, they are lucky to have such an attentive father. Is their mother traveling with you? Uh, no, no, she is dead. I'm sorry. Oh, we are going to America to begin anew. Uh, Lolo, not so far away. Uh, come back where I can see you. They keep you busy. <laughs> yes. I'd be happy to stay with them after dinner if you'd like to join the men in the lounge. Uh, I, I would never ask it. I know. That's why I offer to you. I would like to help you. No, I think... Uh, yes, yes, uh, thank you. That would be very kind of you. 
for the first time in months, my father seemed to relax. Maybe he was happy uh, to have found a friend. Maybe he thought we were safely away. Whatever the reason, for the first time, he dared to let us out of his sight. That night, he tucked us into our bed and sang to us. Sing you a morning golden and true. I would make this day last for all time. Then fill the night deep in moonshine. Hmm. Are you going to bed too, Papa? No, Michel. I'm going to spend some time in the lounge. Miss Lehman will be staying with you. Will you sing to us when you come back? I will always sing to you, Michelle. I will always sing to you. Look, we can't play canasta with only three people. You find a fourth, and we'll see if we can't get a game together. What about this chap? The, the one with the pipe? Hmm, yes. Excuse me, sir. Are you speaking to me? Yes. Uh, would you like to join us for cards? Only we need a fourth, you see. Huh. Yes, I, I think I should be happy to join you. Uh. The game is Canasta. Are you familiar with it? Of course. Mm, of course. <laughs> Dear Lord, we're all going to lose our money tonight, boys. <laughs> <laughs> For hours, my father played cards with these men. I never knew their names, or even whether they survived the trip. At the same time, on the bridge of the Titanic, another drama was beginning to play out. Mr. Lightoller. Mr. Murdoch. Is it 10 o'clock already? Afraid so. Where are we now? Uh, she's steering a course of north, 71 degrees west. Thank you. Ehrlich. I'm sorry? Oh, <laughs> it is pretty cold. Oh, oh yes. 31 degrees. Mm -hmm. uh, look at those stars. Mm -hmm. I've rarely seen a sky like that. There's no moon tonight. Or clouds. Tremendous night. We'll be up around the ice somewhere about 11 o'clock, I suppose. Thank you. I spoke to the captain earlier. There's uh, not much wind. The ice will be harder to see. If the weather becomes hazy, we're to slow down. Mm. He said he wishes to be notified if there's any doubt about the situation. Very good. Oh, I advise the lookouts to watch for growlers. Understood. Thank you. Well, I'm off. Good night, Mr. Lightoller. Good night. Ooh. Ah. Mm. Ooh. Hmm? Sir, is, is there something I can help you with? Huh? Pardon? Is there something I can help you with? Uh, no, uh, no thank you. I, I, I was just... Uh, just watching the sea. On such a cold night? Uh, I have many things on my mind. My children... Pardon, monsieur. My name... Uh, my name is Louis Hoffman. I'm, I'm taking my boys to America. Starting a, a new life for us. Good for you, Mr. Hoffman. Do you have children? Well... Yes. Uh, yes, I do. You would do anything for them, yes? I think I would, yes. Mm -hmm. Would you take them from their home? From the people that love them? Take them away to a new life where they know no one? I can't... I can't answer that question, Mr. Hoffman. I've... 
been on the sea for 22 years. Uh, my job takes me away from my family most of the time. Uh, uh, but but uh, what you do is for them? Yeah. I suppose it is. Uh, is there anything you wouldn't do to uh, assure your children live a, a happy life? Mr. Hoffman, is your wife traveling with you? Uh, my wife is... My wife is dead. Oh. Well, in that case, no. There's nothing I wouldn't do for my children. I don't know. I, I just don't know. Get some sleep, Mr. Hoffman. Everything will look better in the morning. Hmm? Yes, thank you, Monsieur... Uh, Lightall. Thank you, Monsieur Lightall. Miss Lehman? Shh. Uh, is everything all right? Everything's fine. They've been asleep for hours. Oh, good. Thank you for, for your help. Oh, it was my pleasure. You look cold. Oh, uh, I've been walking outside. Well, do you have any brandy? Oh, I, I'll be fine. Staying for a little longer? No, of course not. Thank you. Uh, I'll be back. <clears throat> Officer Murdoch, what have we struck? An iceberg, Captain. I put her hard to starboard and run the engines full astern, but it was too close. She hit it. I intended to port around it, but she hit before I could do any more. Close the watertight doors. Already closed, sir. Have you rung the warning bell? Aye, sir. Someone find Mr. Andrews. Aye. I want to know how serious this situation is. You slept through the whole collision? Uh, there was little to feel. It's amazing, isn't it? A collision that caused the death of over 1,500 people. Hardly noticeable. We slept until after 1 a.m. That's when my father returned. Mr. Hoffman? Uh, the children are... We must get them up. There is an emergency. An, an emergency? I suggest you find your family, Miss Lehman. Wake up, boys. Wake up. Uh, Mr. Hoffman... Miss Lehman, this is serious. Go find your family. My father dressed my brother and me. Then we joined the others on the boat deck. We watched the boats load and be lowered into the ocean. Several times my father brought us to a boat intending to put us in, and then stepped away. I think he wanted to keep us with him as long as he could. Give me a women and children. All women and children. Yes, come on, right. What will happen to you, yes, Papa? You and your brother are, are going to take a trip in a, in a smaller boat. Will you come with us? No. Not this time, Michel. <laughs> just, just sit here with me. Here at Mont. Let me put my coat around both of you and keep you warm. If I had words to make a day for you, I'd sing you a morning, golden and true. I would make this day last for all time, then feel the night deep in moonshine. 
If I had words to make a day for you. My father held us, sang to us, tried to soothe us. But when it came time to put us on the last boat, he did not hesitate. Last for all time. Then feel the night. Children only. I, I say women and children only. Walk off, boys. Nobody gets through. So we say so. Get back. Mr. Lighter. Mr. Hoffman, bring your children. Up here, up here. Give way, you. Uh, I've done all that I could. Give us your boys. This is Edmond. Right, on you go, Edmond. Mario. A moment, please. Mr. Hoffman, we must hurry. I must say goodbye to Michelle. Quickly, man, quickly! Michelle. Yes, Papa? I must tell you something. It is very important that you remember. All right. When you see your mother, you must tell her exactly what I'm about to tell you. I yes, Papa. Oh, my child. Mr. Hoffman, we cannot delay. Do you understand, Michel? Yes, Papa. I understand. Come on, come on. We've got to get him on board now, Mr. Hoffman. Now. Go. Go. And don't forget. Papa, I'll take them. Thank you. I love you, my sons. That's the lot. Lower away. You men, lower away. Papa. Papa! Hush, child. Hush. You'll be fine. Papa! Oh. As the boat was lowered into the sea, my father stepped back into the crowd. I never saw him again. In less than half an hour, the Titanic had slipped beneath the surface of the ocean. Tell me about that night, in the lifeboat. Mm. There is little to tell. We were close enough to see the ship go down, but I did not watch. I sat in the arms of a woman I'd never seen before. I remember crying for my father, but little else. Edith Russell said she let you play with her musical toy pig. Perhaps, I don't remember. How are you and your mother reunited? When the Carpathia landed in New York, my brother and I went to stay with one of the women in our boat, a woman named Margaret Hayes. Do you know what it's like to be alone in a faraway country where you don't even speak the language? Well, I once spent a couple hours at an airport terminal bar in Oslo. When the French consul arrived, he tried to learn who we were. I'm afraid I was not very helpful. Those are very nice toy boats. Oui. What city do you come from? Oui. Do you remember the big boat that took you away from France? Oui. What is your name? Oui. <sighs> News and photographs eventually reached France. Ironically, it was the very people who helped my father escape that told my mother about our fate. <laughs> Marcel! Marcel! No. Okay, okay, Marcel. Come on. <clears throat> Marcel, your children have been found. What? Where? Where are my children? Where? 
Is there in New York? New, New York? Hey. <gasps> Michelle took them to America? I... <laughs> Billy? Where is Michelle? <sighs> Where is Michelle? The White Star Line paid for my mother to come to New York and collect us. She must have been very excited. The ordeal had taken its toll on her. She was not well mentally when we were reunited. I suspect my grandmother did not help. I'd think she would have been thrilled. She was. But you see, my mother was still very much in love with my father. She was upset that he had taken Edmund and I away from her, but deep down, she loved him. No matter what ideas my grandmother put in her head. And you remembered your father's message to her? I remember it to this day. Since then, I have never told anyone what it was, not even my brother. What was the message? Uh, uh, That is between my father and my mother. It drove your mother mad. I suppose it did. And still you defend your father? In his dying moment, he passes a message to you that drove his wife the mother of his children to an asylum? To a lonely and dismal death? This is the man that you defend? He was my father. Women and children only. I I say women and children only. Walk on, boys. Nobody gets through unless we say so. Get back. Mr. Lighthouse. Mr. Hoffman, bring your children. Up here, up here. Give way, you! Uh, I've done all that I could. Give us your boys. This is Edmond. Right, on you go, Edmund. Mario. A moment, please. Mr. Hoffman, we must hurry. I must say goodbye to Michelle. Quickly, man, quickly! Michelle. Yes, Papa? I must tell you something. It is very important that you remember. When you see your mother, you must tell her exactly what I'm about to tell you. Yes, Papa. Oh, my child, when your mother comes for you, as she surely will, tell her that I loved her. I loved her dearly. And I still do. Tell her that I expected her to follow us, so that we might all live happily together in the peace and freedom of the new world. Mr. Hoffman, we cannot delay. Do you understand, Michelle? Yes, Papa. I understand. Come on, come on. We've got to get him on board now, Mr. Hoffman. Now. Go. Go. And don't forget. Papa, I'll take them. Thank you. I love you, my sons. That's the lot. Lower away! You men! Lower away! I love you, Marcel. I love you. The Titanic Wave, a legacy radio theater production, is based on the true story of Michel Navratil and was written by Darby Kern. For the sake of the narrative, some names have been changed and events condensed. The Titanic Wave was produced by Craig Hart and directed by Darby Kern. Editing and sound design were by Craig Hart. The musical score was composed by John Campbell. Our cast includes Nato Jacobson as Michelle Navratil Sr., Amy Lilly as Marcel Navratil, Katie Lee as Valerie Coretto, A.W. Miller as Michelle Navratil Jr., Randy Strew as Wade Benson, Steve Schleicher as Captain E.J. Smith, John Fornoff as 2nd Officer Charles Lightoller, and Rich Swingle as 1st Officer William Murdoch. 
The Titanic Wave included the multi-voice talents of J.D. Sutter, Katrina Mazier, Jonathan Cook, Micah Touche, Craig Hart, Darby Kern, Trisha Rose, and Stephanie Nimit parker This is Craig Hart. The Titanic Wave is a production of Legacy Radio Theater in association with Tannhauser Gate Entertainment.